An old man domesticated a cute puppy, but 10 years later it has grown into a huge, merciless monster. Now it devours everyone in its path. In 1506, Yung Zhang, with an army of rebels, staged a rebellion and overthrew the king. The new ruler crushed all resistance and established total control over the population. During these times, a terrible plague began spreading through the kingdom of Chosen, and the new king ordered the army to dispose of all infected people. The ordinary peasants are herded into a deep pit where they are ruthlessly slaughtered. A panicked woman begs the soldiers to spare her healthy daughter, but is shot in the back by an arrow. The girl survives and tries to wake up her mother. When the last desperate cries of the men subside, a man descends into the pit and takes the girl with him. As darkness falls, a prolonged howl is heard from the pit. Ten years have passed since that day. Yung Zhang is informed of rumors that have been circulating throughout the kingdom. People are concerned that monsters have appeared in the mountain where the extermination of the infected took place, and are preying on civilians. These events are causing great panic among the population, and this could threaten the king's authority. Therefore, he is forced to take drastic measures. Somewhere in the middle of the forest, Yun and his friend Sung and adopted daughter Myung try to procure some food, but are unsuccessful in doing so. The hapless hunters fail to catch any fish either and return home with nothing. Myung urges her father to move from the remote village closer to the palace to have access to normal food. Yun refuses the girl for the NTH time and sends her off to the garden to get vegetables for the soup. Meanwhile, an intruder arrives at their yard and peeks through the windows of the house. Myung grabs her bow and aims it at the stranger's back, demanding that he introduce himself. The servant, named her, says that he has come for the man who used to work in the king's personal guard. Myung cannot understand who he is talking about, for her father is an ordinary peasant. At that moment Sung approaches her and, out of surprise, she fires an arrow at her guest. The young man manages to duck and meets the girl's eyes. A romantic spark instantly flashes between them. Yun appears at the commotion and her says that he came to see him at Kyung Jong's orders. Myung is surprised to learn that her father and Sung were indeed his majesty's finest guards. Nevertheless, Yun has no intention of returning to his former occupation and tells her to leave. However, Yung Jong arrives at the man's house in person, and all present bow before him. During the meeting, the king recalls the events of 10 years ago. Yun came to the palace with the little girl in his arms, demonstrating to everyone that she was not contagious. The guardian was shocked by the king's senseless cruelty and expressed disappointment at his cruel order. According to him, the disease no longer exists, and the king simply wiped out his subjects. Yun Zhang's guards drew their swords to deal with the man. Only Sung stood up to defend him. However, the ruler decided to spare the soldiers. He banished the guards and the little girl outside of Han Yang. Now, Yung Zhang once again turns to Yun for help. He speaks of a fearsome monster that is once again spreading disease across the kingdom and tearing the limbs off of civilians. The king gives the former guard his battle sword back and asks him to stand up for Kiasong once more. After a sleepless night, Yun decides to return to Han Yang. Meanwhile, the shamans hold a ritual near the river to rid the land of the merciless monster. But then, the women are attacked and the water in the river turns red. The tragedy is witnessed by a little girl who manages to escape. Arriving in Hanyang, the Yun family is surprised to see the capital. The once rich city has fallen into disrepair, and the people are barely making ends meet. The travelers find her and ask them to inspect the new crime scene. Near the river, they find the bodies of the shamans and traitors with their limbs torn off. Yun scrutinizes the bodies of the victims and notices the traces of string on their ankles. He decides to question the little witness. The girl says she saw something very strange, but there is no fear in her voice. Yun and Sung decide to follow the witness to find out what she really saw. They notice a man in hooded clothes handing the girl a bag and hurriedly walk away. Sung goes after him, but the man manages to escape on his horse. Yun catches up with the witness at a house where she is serving food to small children from the very same bag. The girl confesses to the man that she lied to him about what happened at the river in exchange for the food. Because of the rumors about the monster, people are afraid to go out to work at the market and the locals are suffering from starvation. Although the girl has not seen the beast in person, she believes it exists. Meanwhile, another attack occurs in the mountains. Yun and Sun discover knife marks and strange blisters on victims' bodies. The men notice that one of the bodies is pinned on a branch of a tall tree, something no human could have done. After examining the bodies, Yun reports to the king. He claims that all of these men have been attacked by a man. Someone deliberately used knives to simulate a monster attack. However, all the victims were infected by an unknown disease. A mouse test subject after contact with the bodies instantly began getting covered in sores and passes away in a matter of hours. Yun is determined to find out who or what is behind the crimes. Zhang Zhang orders the formation of a search party with Yun in charge to hunt down the monster. The authorities are willing to send only a hundred of their soldiers on the mission and tell them to gather volunteers from among the peasants. The guards forcibly take men away to join the search party, leaving only women and children in the capital. 
Among the volunteers, Yun grudgingly notices his adopted daughter, who has disguised herself as a guard. The captain orders her to remain in the city, but she vehemently refuses to comply, and in the end persuades him to take her with him. At the sound of the gong, the search party sets out into the mountains and thoroughly sweeps the surroundings. However, apart from some pink slime dripping from tree branches, they are unable to find anything suspicious. Sung suggests they finish the search so they can return to the city before dark. But Royal Army Commander Jin insists on moving on, as the monster is out hunting in the middle of the night. Myung anxiously tells her father that she hasn't noticed a single human bone along the way, which means the creature could be very hungry. Despite her daughter's concerns, Yun tells the group to split into groups and continue their search. Meanwhile, the king has a conversation with his advisor. He is confident that once the search is completed, they will find that there is no monster. He will inform the people and trust in the authorities will be restored. The king is sure that all of these attacks have been orchestrated by someone. As darkness falls, Yun's group encounters their first problems. An old volunteer goes astray and heads in the opposite direction from the search party. After following him, Sung reaches a cliff, where he is horrified to see fresh traces of red fluid. Soon Yun, Myung, and her also reach the cliff. The girl finds the place very familiar, as if she has been here before. Sun beckons his friends over and shows them the imprint of a huge paw that has been left on the ground. As the other volunteers gather at the cliff, Yun tells them to keep searching in the pit. Meanwhile, Jin orders his soldiers to eliminate all the volunteer peasants in their group. After the atrocities are committed, he orders some of the soldiers to return to the palace. Yun's group sees a signal fire in the sky, indicating that Jin has discovered the monster. Seconds later, the volunteers are fired upon by arrows. Jin's soldiers massacre the remaining peasants. Her engages the guards and saves Myung from the villain's sword. In the end, only the four protagonists are left alive, confronted by dozens of guards. Suddenly an arrow flies at Yun, and Sung shields him with his own body. He gets away with a minor wound to the arm, but is caught by the soldiers along with his friend. They also catch her and Myung and tie them up together. The smug Jin tells them that the monster never existed. All along, the kingdom's soldiers have been deliberately exterminating the peasants to keep the people in fear. Ten years ago, the people also easily believed in the existence of the plague, which helped Zhang Zhang gain power. After these words, Myung recalls the tragic events from her childhood and tries to break free from her shackles in a fury. Jin indifferently pushes the girl along with her into the pit, but they manage to survive by hanging from the rope. Enraged, Yun promises to eliminate his daughter's abusers, but he is bashed over the head. Jin tells the guards to eliminate the remaining members of the search party by setting up a monster attack. Her and Myung dodge the guard's arrows. Suddenly, a heavy breathing is heard below, and a huge clawed paw emerges from the darkness. Within seconds, the creature climbs to the very top of the rocky cliff and slays the guard with the bow. The soldiers are confronted by an enraged monster covered in sores and blisters. The frightened Jin orders the soldiers to fire at the monster, but it is not afraid of arrows. Within seconds, it is near the attackers and rips them apart. While the monster hunts the soldiers, Sung and his friend free themselves from their shackles and descend into the pit. Fortunately, Myung and her manage to survive their encounter with the monster. They notice around them the bodies of the monster's victims, on which blisters have formed. Yun says they need to report this immediately to the king before the contagious creature reaches the capital. However, the monster decides to return to its pit. Suddenly the old man who disappeared earlier during the search operation appears from the cave. He tells the team to smear themselves with the monster's slime so as not to become infected and to get rid of the human smell. The old man then extinguishes all the torches and urges those present to be quiet. The monster cannot see well, but it reacts to sounds and movements. The creature descends into the pit, getting close to Myung. But the old man's advice works, and the monster cannot smell the intruders. Choking on the remains of human meat, the monster spits directly on the girl's face. Eventually, the creature goes to sleep. Seizing the moment, the group tries to hide in a cave. However, at the last moment, the creature senses the human scent emanating from Young and rushes after the runaways in pursuit. The group runs through the intricate labyrinth of the cave, miraculously avoiding being eaten. The road ends in a cliff, and the group has to jump down into the water to escape. Meanwhile, Jin and several other guards manage to return to the palace alive. He reports to Prime Minister Sim that the monster does exist. It transpires that all along he was the one behind the brutal crimes and invented the monster. Taking advantage of people's fears, he has influenced all of King Zhang Zhang's decisions. Now that the monster has turned out to be real, Sim worries that the people will turn against the government. He orders the soldiers to burn the city to quell any resistance. In doing so, he will take advantage of the helplessness of the current king and take his place. Several men of the search party, whose bodies are covered with ulcerous growths, return to the capital. 
the people panic for fear of becoming infected, and the soldiers begin to set fire to houses with the inhabitants inside. Meanwhile, the old man leads the group to a secret passageway through which they can enter the palace. In the basement of the castle, the group discover a chamber with huge cages. The old man tells them that the former chosen ruler was very fond of monsters and had a separate area in the castle set aside for them. As a young man, the old man was in charge of feeding the creepy beasts and eventually became attached to one of them. When Zhang Zhang overthrew the king, he ordered that all the dangerous monsters be disposed of. The servant then helped his little pet escape through a secret passage. Later, after destroying the infected in the pit, he ate a plague-infested body and turned into a ruthless monster. The creature sneaks into the secret passage, and the old man tells the group to go up. Using a toy, he lures the big hound into the enclosure and locks himself inside with it. The monster casts a hateful look at the old man and rips him apart. The beast then effortlessly breaks free of the cage and sets off in pursuit of the rest of the people. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister makes an address to the people and promises to take care of the wounded and provide housing for those who lost their homes in the fire. The naive people thanks him, believing that he is saving them from another plague. Yun's team finally manages to reach the king's chambers. He informs them that the monster is real and was bred within the walls of this castle. At that moment, Sim bursts into the chambers with his armed guards, and injures Zhang Zhang. The rebels seize power and eliminate the king's guards. Sim's guards take Yun's team hostage. The prime minister plans to inform the people that Yun is given the order to put the capital on fire. Since the people have already lost confidence in the king, it will not be difficult for him to dethrone him. Sim orders the execution of the prisoners, but at that moment the monster bursts out of the basement. The soldiers try to fight it off, but the creature disposes of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the courtyard, Myung pretends to have a terrible itch and the others play along with her. By distracting the guards, they manage to stealthily free themselves from their shackles and beat their opponents. Taking advantage of the commotion, Zhang Zhang and Yun also escape from the guards. Sim sends all the guards of the kingdom to fight the monster. Eventually the creature is contained by huge ropes. The king is located by his loyal servants, and Yun orders them to hide his majesty in a safe place. Sim orders the soldiers to take the monster outside the castle so that it may be publicly destroyed in front of the admiring crowd. However, the beast violently breaks free of its shackles and its red fluid splashes onto the guards. They instantly become feverish and their bodies become covered with numerous sores. The prime minister and several other guards run away in a panic. When the protagonists arrive on the scene, they decide to set a trap for the monster in a basement holding cell. Despite the protests of his loved ones, Yun decides to be the live bait to capture the beast. Meanwhile, the palace is stormed by locals to escape the contagion that has infested their homes. Myung informs them of the monster that is in the palace and urges the people to help close its exit to the village. She also informs them that Sim is responsible for setting the fire and destroying their loved ones. The enraged people drive the prime minister inside the castle with pitchforks and lock the gates, leaving him to be devoured by the monster. Yun fires signal flares into the sky, attracting the monster's attention. Meanwhile, Sung and her set up barrels of explosives in the basement. Jin, covered in sores, appears in front of them, planning to avenge his defeat. A fierce battle ensues between them, during which her pierces the villain with his sword. But Jin has no intention of giving up and won't let her pull out his weapon. Myung runs into the basement and points an arrow at Jin, but he shields himself with her. The girl asks the clerk to repeat what he did the first time they met. Jin's body falls to the ground, and Yun bursts into the basement, chased by the beast. The team ignites the fuse and hastily flees to the top. Before leaving the basement, Yun notices that the flames have gone out. He forcibly pushes his best friend outside and asks him to take care of Myung. The warrior locks himself inside with the monster and throws his torch into the explosive containers. An explosion occurs, which shudders the castle. After realizing that her father has remained inside the basement, Myung becomes hysterical. Daybreak comes and the rain washes down the bodies of the victims. The monster is defeated and the people open the castle gates. Myung desperately tries to find her father among the rubble. Suddenly she hears someone breathing under the boards, and finds Yun still alive. The townspeople help dismantle the wreckage to rescue the warrior. The happy girl is reunited with her adoptive father, and the people congratulate each other on their victory. At the end of the story, Myung is left to serve at the palace with her beloved her. Her father and his friend decide to return to their home to resume their normal lives. On the way back, Sung asks Yun how he managed to survive. It turns out that at the last moment before the explosion, the man strapped his body to a rope and flew up. The plot of the movie is based on real records that were written during Chosen's time. Do you believe this story is real? Share your opinion in the comments.